Let's talk. So, there are people out there right now, some of whom I'm hoping are watching this video at least, who are contemplating getting ready to go to their first event, maybe their second event in the next couple of weeks. Some of you may not even have heard of events until a few months ago, maybe even a few weeks ago. So what is an event and what the real crux of this video, what I want to talk to you about is what do you need to know to go to your first event? So let's start off. What is an event? An event is a time where the SCA, usually one group, most often one group, hosts an event where everyone travels to a central location and they hang out and we do stuff. Now there are a bunch of different events. A classic SCA event is usually, at least it was, a camping event where everyone showed up Friday night and Saturday morning you woke up and then there was a heavy weapons tournament and then a rapier tournament and there was an arts and sciences competition during the day and there was an archery competition and sometimes there's a chess competition or a other board game competition, usually some other sundry competitions. Um, and then in the evening, everyone would get changed out of the clothes that they got sweaty in during the day and they would go to the feast hall and there'd be a big feast that would be served. That would take one or two or three hours. Um, and then after that, everyone would clean up their places and they put their feast gear away and then there'd be a court. And at court, the presiding nobles or maybe even the presiding royals would hand out awards um, to the people in attendance, uh, awards recognizing accomplishments in all of the SCA fields. Um, and then there'd be late night activities, bardic circles, parties, uh, just sessions sitting around the campfire chatting. Um, and people would go to bed at two or three or four, or maybe five in the morning. And then we'd all get up a little later than we should have on Sunday, uh, strike camp and uh, go home. Uh, that's the classic SCA camping event template, at least as I have been exposed to it here in Ostia, or I'm sure other kingdoms, I know other kingdoms approach it differently. Another event that we have, another template we have, is the Collegium, and that is where the hosting group will reserve uh, some sort of classroom space. Sometimes it is a church or a college or university building with classrooms in it. And um, that's where you show up in the morning and you spend all day going between classes, um, learning pretty much whatever you want. Um, there, you will hear a lot of talk of day events or camping events. Now, a day event is one like the Collegium, where you sh it, the site opens early in the morning, usually on a Saturday morning, most, most often. And site closes late in the afternoon or mid-evening Saturday. And that, that's it. There is no camping. There's no spending the night there. You, as they say when they close site, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> um, Multi-day events, you will often hear them referred to as camping. Now, that doesn't mean you have to camp. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of people, especially people I know who are not as young as they used to be, um, don't camp. Uh, they will leave site and either stay at a nearby hotel or motel, or they will go stay with friends who are close to site. And that way they get the benefit of climate-controlled um, climate controlled sleeping environment, which may be a medical necessity, um, proper back support of a mattress or a cot, and not having to haul all of the, you know, the weight of a shelter with them. That, that's a major deal for a lot of people. <clears throat> um, you will hear, uh, you will hear some events called multi-day, even though they are collegium events, um, those are fairly rare, but those generally are like, uh, oh, the few times I've attended Known World Heraldic and Scribal Symposium, a couple of those, there were classes Friday night, Saturday all day, and the first half of Sunday. And I mean, you're not camping in the hotel, you get a hotel room where you stay with friends, you know, in the area. So that is, um, that's kind of how events break down. Again, that's broad brush, and I'm sure different kingdoms have some different rules and customs on that. I'm just kind of throwing out what I know. But suppose you have an event coming up, 
and you want to go, and it's probably going to be your first event, or you have an event coming up, you don't even know if you want to go. You're, you're never done this before. You're like, well, what is this? So the first thing you want to do is you want to find the online listing or the Black Star listing for that event. Now, the Black Star, by the way, is uh, it's the Onstior newsletter. I say Black Star kind of uh, reflexively, but you want to find your Kingdom newsletter which I believe they're all available online. You can download the PDF and read them, but there has to be an ad in there for the event. That's required by kingdoms, by I believe all kingdom laws. Um, and that will have the address of the event. That will have any charges that may be assessed in order to get in. Usually there's a registration fee to get in the door and um, feast may be an extra charge. It may tell you if there's a tavern on site, and that's where there'll be, um, you know, food provided at cost. You know, it's, um, pardon the comparison, it's kind of like a fast food arrangement where you walk up, pay for a meal, and they'll give you a meal kind of situation. Um, but it also will tell you what activities are going on there. They will say classes, and they might say what type of classes they are. They may even have a list of classes. If you go to the online listing, the website for the event or the Facebook group, they may have a class list as, as far out as a week or two where it lists all the classes, might even have the class schedule. Um, or it may say um, what competitions are being held. If it's another type of event, they may have chivalric competition or rapier competition. There may be a chess competition. You know, it, there's a whole bunch of things there, but it will list what's going on at the event. And that'll help you decide, okay, um, this might be something I'm interested in. Now, suppose you decide you want to go. Well, what do you do next? So, this isn't a hard and fast law, but it is a strongly held SCA tradition that you make an attempt at historical costume, or garb, as we call it. Now, does that mean you have to run out and buy an expensive costume? Or do you have to mean you have to run out and buy a cheap costume? No, and don't. Um, does that mean you need to suddenly learn how to sew and make a costume? No, and don't. What it means is, is you have to make an attempt at something that's not going to rip everyone else out of the medieval mindset when you walk on site. A Metallica t-shirt, blue jeans, and sneakers that light up when you walk will do that. Don't. Um, what you should do, if, you, if you're going to an event, you don't have any garb, contact your local officer and see if you guys have garb that you can borrow. Almost all the groups I've ever encountered have some garb that you can borrow. And if there's not garb in the group's actual inventory, there are a lot of people out there who are happy to grab a large shirt or um a simple dress you know and they'll they'll hold it up and they'll look at you and like okay we can belt this and it'll fit just fine loose fit is kind of a thing with a lot of medieval clothes not all and there's plenty that were absolutely custom fit to the wearer but um there's plenty of of medieval and early renaissance outfits that they're supposed to be baggy so you don't have to be the exact proportions of the owner to fit comfortably and actually look good in the outfit um but they will uh, someone out there will be able to help you get garb. And if, if the local officers don't get back to you, they're busy or the email doesn't work or whatever, you know, if you're still a, you know, a week out, a couple days out, contact the event steward. Because the group hosting the event probably has an officer who will loan you garb. Again, we have an officer whose job that is. It's called the hospitaller. And their job is to coordinate the... Um, Part of their job is to coordinate the garb that they have for people in your situation where you need to get a costume, or as like we say, garb, for that one event. And they'll orchestrate loaning it to you and getting it back from you after the event. So the next thing you need to do is you need to decide when are you showing up and when are you leaving. Now, if you're going to go for a full weekend, you're going to show up Friday night and leave Sunday morning, okay, there you go. How are you going to get there? Do you have your own car? Great. Do you need a ride? Do you need someone who has a bigger cargo envelope than you? If you have a little subcompact, it may not fit. Now, if you have a little subcompact and you're taking three people with you, wow, that's four people in a car with four seat belts. Might not be a lot of room for a tent. Maybe you need to contact someone uh, who, uh, you know, they can 
uh, run convoy with you and they have a pickup truck and you can throw all your tent stuff in the back of the truck or maybe you need a tent not a lot of people have tents um, and by the way about tents I, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on this you absolutely 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 do not need to go get a period historical pavilion just don't um, an Ozark Trail cheapy that gives you privacy and keeps the wind off of you is just fine um, there are plenty of people that camp in those. I know some, some long-time players who camp in those. It, it's, we don't judge. Seriously, we do not judge. We don't frown on those. I know plenty of players that will hang out out front of an Ozark Trail or a, a Trailblazers tent and put their feet up and hang out with friends just as fast as they'll go hang out in front of a, a Panther Historical Pavilion. It's, we don't care. Um, Historical pavilions are their own conversation, but it is not a benchmark you need to hit, especially on your first event. So don't worry about that. But what if you don't? Uh, what if you don't want to camp? Okay, um, figure out what time do you want to show up in the morning, um, and math your travel. You know, can you drive there, or do you have a friend that's driving and you need them to drive you? Are you going to ride with them and split gas? Organize that. Now, what do you need when you get to the door? This is kind of the, the, the crux of all this. So make sure you have money to get in. Uh, most events, all the events I'm aware of, uh, almost all the events I'm aware of, there is a charge to get in the door. And that's the fee at the front gate is part of how the SCA funds itself at a local level. Those fees are how groups pay for new equipment at the group level. So the, the cost to get in will be listed on the event ads, should be listed on the event website and the Facebook group. Um, and if you can't find any of that, you usually post to whatever your social media is in the area for your local group and people there will know what the cost to get in is. <clears throat> so you uh, make sure you have money for that. Make sure you have money for any purchases you plan or will need to make. If there's a tavern on site and you plan on eating on site, make sure you have money for the tavern. Um, I always tell people carry $20 around in singles or fives, but you know, do whatever you got to do. Most taverns that I'm aware of are cash only. Very few people have card readers um, and most of them don't mess with checks. That's been my experience. If they say different in the ad, then go with what the ad says, of course. Um, footwear. Let's talk about footwear. Uh, I just got finished saying no Metallica t-shirts, blue jeans, and, and self-lighting shoes. That being said, now a T-tunic is kind of important, or some sort of top is kind of important. We do want a dress or a shirt or something so you don't look categorically modern. Um, sweatpants are nice for leg wear. Shoes are kind of a touchy subject for me because as a larger guy, I fully appreciate that I need the support of modern shoes. I can't do period shoes. I don't want to do period shoes. Number one, they're expensive, but I absolutely am not uh, going to give up the arch support and the heel support and the cushioning of a modern sole. I need it in, in my body type. Now, I own black leather shoes. Are they period? No, not in the least, but they, at 10 feet away, they don't draw your eye to them. If all you have are glow-in-the-dark yellow Reeboks, Okay, just wear them. Don't don't make a big deal out of it. You don't have to put on flip flops if you don't want to. You don't have to go buy black shoes. You don't have to go make something to cover your shoes. As you play more in the SCA, it is probably a good idea the next time you go out to get shoes to consider getting some sort of slip-ons or or leather footwear or whatever that looks a little bit more historical. But, comma, your first event, wear what will whatever will support you comfortably because. Comfort is important. If you're miserable in your footwear for a whole day, that, that can like ruin your knees and your hips and your back for the rest of the week. I don't want to do that to you. If there is feast and you plan on attending, <clears throat> please make sure that you have feast gear. Now feast gear, as I've covered in another video, is um, you bring your own flatware, your own plate, your own bowl, and your own uh, uh, cup. You probably don't have your own feast gear. Again, reach out to your local group or reach out to the hosting event group if your group is um, not getting back to you. And see if they have some feast gear they can loan you. Most groups do. 
Um, and I will have a link in the show notes about with my videos about feast gears to get a little bit more information about that. What else should you pack? If the event is even partially outside, I would make sure to have a little thing of bug spray, um, especially here in Oklahoma and Texas. Um, some of the local wildlife includes the six legged winged variety, which leave really nasty bumps when they bite. Uh, a little bit of bug spray is a good idea. Any medications that you will need over the course of the day, whether that be over-the-counter pain relief, ibuprofen, something I carry with me for good reason, um, any medications for any ailments that you have, especially if you have any standing prescriptions um, that you will need, please make sure to bring those. Um, if you are diabetic, um, you will need to plan around having whatever medications you need around the meal. and. There's a very good chance there will not be refrigeration available on site. Some sites probably do have it or provisions can be made, but if you do require refrigeration, um, you may need to contact the event autocrat ahead of time and say, you have this requirement for your medications, do these resources exist? And they they may say no. Um, there, are, there are certain accommodations that sites simply don't, you know, we, we physically can't provide. So you may have to uh, account for that in your planning. Um, plan to go home. Now, I know that sounds like a stupid thing to say, but keep in mind, if you are day tripping an event and you stay, and it's three hours from your house, and you stay until 11 o'clock at night, are you good to drive nonstop until 2 in the morning? Now, I was when I was in my 20s. I'm not in my 20s anymore, and that type of time factoring has on several occasions caused me to leave earlier or turn to some of my friends on site and say, you got room on your couch so I can get some sleep and then leave in the morning. And you know, and accommodations were made, but the prospect of staying late and socializing at an event, very late sometimes, or staying late at dinner after an event, if it's a collegium, just a one day event where the doors close at six o'clock or five o'clock, the overwhelming majority of the time, with us at least, you know, you grab a group of friends, you go out to dinner. I've had dinners last until closing, 9 30, 10 o'clock. Okay, that's 10, three hour drive home. Am I good driving until one in the morning? Maybe, kinda. Yeah, not so much. If I stayed that late, I'm, I'm asking some people if there's room on their couch, just because I know how far I could push myself safely. Um, those are those are kind of the metrics involved. Um, is it better to travel with someone who is uh, who's been to an event before, especially that event for you? Absolutely. And if, if someone who's a more seasoned player, uh, what would like for you or wants to offer for you to travel with them, absolutely take them up on that opportunity. I think that's a a great option for you to learn firsthand uh, on, on a efficient basis the ins and outs of going to an event but at the end of the day at the end of the day know how to get there know how you're getting home figure out what accommodations you're going to need on site you know do you just need a bench to sit down on or do you need to bring a tent or do you need to have crash space um, bring the money you need um, make a make an attempt at period garb uh, honestly, a tea tunic and belt will go miles towards that. Um, and oh, last but not least, if uh, if you have the opportunity, uh, some head covering is usually a good idea. Part of that, a very small part of that, is because in period a large number of cultures, um, keeping your head covered was considered appropriate indoor and out. If you are outside, you'll notice this hat has a wide brim. Um, this is sunshade and keeps you from cooking out there under an Oklahoma or Texas sun. And I know we're not the only states that will um, char broil anyone caught out in the sun for prolonged periods of time. Is this the end all to beat all for first events? No, it's not. There, If you were to ask any 10 people in my region, let alone my kingdom, how would you, uh, 
you know, what would you recommend for me going to my first event? You're going to get 10 different answers. If you ask those same 10 people the same question in a week, you're going to get 10 more different answers. But this is my offering on the subject. Now, most important thing for you, I'm sure if, if you're listening to this, you have more questions, probably a lot more questions than when you started this with, and that's okay. Ask them. Ask them here in the show comments or reach out to your local officers and ask them. Um, reach out to people on social media and ask there. Because really the best preparation for an event, especially now in the age of social media and online interconnection, is start the conversation early and learn as much as you can from the people who are going or have been there and factor that into your decision. So. I hope this is all useful. I hope uh, this helps inform you of some of the, the metrics that go into going to an event, especially your first event. And uh, until I see you at that event, which I do look forward to, goodbye and God bless.